Don't forget to check us out on Patreon where you'll receive exclusive content to videos that are not available on YouTube. And for those of you that like the one video instead of the two video format, you get that as well. Bam! For a dollar. Bam! It's a dollar a month. Yep. I think we're cooling in a bag of Cheetos. You can't even get that for a dollar. Hey, that's true. <laughs> not hot Cheetos, though. <laughs> Only like regular, yeah, regular Cheetos. So check us out on Patreon, guys. We hope to see you there. What's up, guys? Your boys are back. I'm Ryan, my man, George. Well, Shane, guys, how you living out there, man? Free thinkers, what up? Yeah, what up? Yeah, man. So we got the uh, grunge-ish marathon continuing on Ish. here. So we got Candlebox far behind, right? Yeah. Big this request. Big request for this band. But we'll read the wiki really quickly. Uh, so it looks like they're checking boxes already from Seattle, Washington. There we go. Grunge. There we go. Early 90s. <laughs> Looks like they released six studio albums, which achieved multi-platinum and gold certification, as well as numerous charting singles. Um, this is interesting. They were the first successful act on Maverick Records, the same uh, record label that had Alanis Morissette and Deftones, Deftones on it. Okay. They found immediate success with the release of their self-debuted uh, uh, album in 93. It featured the band's biggest hits, Far Behind and You, and was certified platinum by the uh, RIAA. So they did the thing, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, they, okay. they, they sold some records. So you this know, it's so crazy, man. Every time we do this, man, and we, we visit the wiki, it's like, man, there's so much uh, music that was out there that we didn't hear about that was actually big and had a lot of success from bands. Yeah, here, so. <laughs> Candlebox's musical style, which predominantly is uh, considered hard rock, has a wide range of influences. Some of their songs have strong references to blues, grunge, mm -hmm. rock, and glam metal. Despite okay. various aforementioned classic roots, their music is considered essentially t a contemporary. So, well, I like that. So this is definitely, to me, just fits right within that scene at right. that time. Kind of what we're trying to get from that from that era. We're trying to get a good feel for the bands that were doing their thing. One last thing here. It says Far Behind entered Billboard's Top 20 in 93 and peaked at number 18. So it, it rolls up the mm. charts pretty high. Okay. And it did say that Candlebox uh, won Metal Edge Magazine's 94 Reader's Choice Award for Best New Band. So when it... To That's me, cool. what I'm gathering from that is they came on the scene and immediately did well. This was like with their Got debut, they success. went platinum. You yep. know what I mean? So uh, let's get into this, man. I'm not sure if we've heard it. Don't think so. Don't Never. Think don't, so the, the band is not ringing any bells, but the name of the band rather is not ringing any bells. Mm -hmm. But let's get into it. Candlebox, uh, Far Behind. Mm -hmm. Definitely sounds uh, familiar. Familiar to you, Just yeah. the, the A, yeah. I, I hear you, though, because that does sound uh, super familiar, though. But you know what? Yeah. I, well, I, I'm, I'm going to just say it, man. I, at the beginning of the video, guys, um, I was whispering some shit to George, and I was like, you know, I didn't want this to derail the video, but I swear the way, the way that that guitar was tuned, it reminded me of uh, Purple Rain. It go. really did. Like, <laughs> never meant to cause you right, any man. trouble. Purple, main, purple Rain review coming soon. <laughs> yeah, we got to get that off, man. <laughs> that was incredible, though. That was incredible. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, that's the way that... that it didn't sound exactly like that, guys, obviously, but it sounded like the the same tone of that guitar yeah. is how uh, Purple Rain sounded as well. So, But so far, man, I'm digging it, man. I like it. Um, it uh, it's funny, though. He started the song saying, I didn't mean to treat you bad, but I did the shit anyway. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it seems like maybe he's kind of um, 
maybe repenting, so to speak, of uh, the, the the bad things that he's done in his life because I guess this person left him far behind. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, it looks, looks like someone passed away. You know what I mean? And he's uh, reflecting on... on um, the it's, way it's, that, it's just the regret. Maybe yeah. the regret in, in um, just their friendship and maybe how yeah. it sort of uh, carried out before they died. It's almost, to me, it sounds like he's reflecting, reminiscing, reminiscing on yeah. someone yeah. that he loved and he just wishes that he could turn back the clock. Yeah. And... Um, Whatever, however, however they were before that person passed away, he just wishes that he could sort of erase mm-hmm. that and maybe start again or something like that along those lines. Because he said, they maybe some would say your life was so sad, but you lived it anyway. Mm-hmm. So clearly to me, they're, they're no longer here. Yeah, they're gone. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then um, mm-hmm. down down in the first verse, he's talking about people watching this person suffer. Mm-hmm. They hear you calling home. Um, you know, so to me, it just it, this is just someone reflecting on someone they lost. I don't know what the cause of the person's death. It seems like they watched you suffer. So they mm-hmm. may be going through depression and may, I don't know if it's a suicide type mm-hmm. of situation, but it's just, to me, it seems like, um, there's pain there. There's definitely extreme sadness in his voice. Yeah. And he just wishes that he could have done something maybe to, to change, you the, know, the course of the what, course happened. Of what yeah. happened. You yeah. know what I mean? So that's when I'm getting out the song. I like it though. Yeah. Yeah. It's I not, like it. It's not bad, man. That course is very familiar. So I may have heard this song or some, somewhere, somehow, some way, somewhere. I'm not sure. Let's keep it going. Couldn't share the pain. See that? Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, nope, all that. And he can sing too. And it's difficult it's to like, make. Boom, yeah, boom, man. Boom, boom. Ah, they keep they're, they're extending the solo with. Um, a, they, I can hear the emotion. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I gotta say, man. You know, um, this is a song that that is capturing a very specific feeling and mood, in my opinion. Hmm. Right. Yeah, uh, I hear it. It's it's a, a song that just seems like again. I feel like he's he's mourning. You know what yeah. I mean. This song is just his way of mourning someone. Um, that was close to him or, or the other band members. Yep. And it's just in a musical form. It's a musical form of mourning to me. Um, and sometimes with songs like that, it's difficult to 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 feel that when you're just sitting in a room and you're just listening to the song. But I think, man, the, the, between the passion in his voice um, and just that breakdown that was coming and even just the beauty in the chords, man, just the, yeah. the progression in the chords, the way they played it, I'm feeling it. But it's not always easy for us to, to feel a song like this because, you know, it's it's capturing a certain essence. And if mm. you're in a very sort of, uh, I don't know, jovial mood, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you're extremely happy, sometimes you're like, uh, you know, okay. Yeah, you. you know, so <laughs> I, my point in saying that is it's a credit to Candlebox, man. And I think that they're, um, I, that you're I, feeling I, what they're trying to uh, put out. I'm there. extreme. I'm yeah. in an extremely good mood, mm-hmm. you know, but, <laughs> but yet I'm still able to feel this, uh, on that type of level, right. I'm still able to kind of get my mind, 
uh, fixated on what he's trying to accomplish in this song, and I, I'm getting the feel of the song here and appreciating the feel yeah. of the song. So I think I would. This is good. We probably should uh, take a look at the video, man. The video probably hits hits the uh, messaging home. Yeah, 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 you know yeah. What I'm saying? Absolutely. Probably, you know. Okay. Yeah, man. So good song, man. Let's let's uh, get back to it. good song yeah man i have to agree with you dude that that was a good song man and i and i maybe i'm just stuck on this purple rain thing man but um this sounds like a song that they would play like maybe in their concert um as a dedication to someone yeah. and then kind of make it hot and maybe i'm still on my paper purple rain shit because that's what he did with purple rain then he got into the other song yeah and man now that i'm listening to this song man there's a lot of similarities and don't crucify me guys I just feel like when I hear this song, man, and I, it's it, I think about Purple Rain. Just the way it started off very slow and somber and very sad, and then it kind of picked up with the intensity of the the way he was playing the guitar. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. in, in, uh, in that song, the intensity and how he brought that to life, and he was that song was. I can 100 percent hear. What I you can hear. hear the similarities. I just can. I don't yeah. know. I, I obviously I know that Prince wasn't grunge, but I do that. That's very close to me, man. Yeah. It's just very close, man. Yeah. So needless to say, I did like the song, man, but that that's kind of what's sticking out in my yeah. head. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought this was a really good song, man. I, I thought this to me is like an anthem song, though. It's 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 like an anthem for almost uh, people going through the mourning stages to me. Like, I don't think every song that involves mm -hmm. death and mourning it fits that bill. That's a good, that's a good uh, point. I, I feel like this is this could be an anthem. I feel like it could be very cathartic for people mm -hmm. going through the, the mourning process. You know yeah. what I mean? Especially how they kind of brought it home and it's just more of a release. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The release with the music and people can cry, get, get their emotions out. And, and I, I can definitely see this song helping people get through get through losing someone. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the, the feel I got with this. I felt that. I felt from the beginning, I felt the chords, the way they were arranged. Yep. I thought they were beautiful. I thought um, even within that breakdown, the transition, how they went back to the original groove, I thought that that was really good at the end because they were going crazy. And he was, you could just tell that he was like, this came from such a real yeah. raw place. He or whoever in the group, I'm not sure. I'm, I, I guess I always had the tendency to just think it's about the <laughs> about the lead singer. Shit. <laughs> yeah, the lead singer, like no one else exists in a group. Nobody but, else had bad yeah, times. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nobody. Whoever this song is, I don't know if this is um, a band member, a band or someone member, they know, whatever the case may be. Whoever it's about, yeah. the band member. If it's not about the band, uh, the uh, lead singer's um, uh, situation directly. He definitely captured what someone else was going through because it yeah. felt like it was him and someone close to him specifically. Yeah, the way he sung that shit. That's true. So that was uh, that was actually really good. That's that a was really good, good song. Man. And you know what I love about this too, George? Man, I didn't feel like they tried to overplay or yeah. over sing yep. or over you know uh, extend the uh, the solo. I felt like it was uh, perfectly balanced between the the slow down groove in the uh, verses and the uh, the intensity how they picked it up. In the chorus, yes. you know, and how they finish it, I thought it was balanced perfectly. I think that that was great. And I don't know, man. This is this is probably a me thing, and, and you know, this is separate from Candlebox. Great song. That's actually going to go on my uh, playlist. Yes, I don't have to be in the right mood, but that's a good song. That's going to be playlist definitely. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, man, with songs like this, man, just because of how dreary and sort of somber and bleak they make it sound, I understand that. But it almost feels like, man, it's like <laughs> it was for the person that was hurting only. Exactly. Is that, that kind of how you, you exactly? Would, I kind of felt like that. That's where you were going with that. Yeah, you know it, what I'm just, it just feels like, dude, you would have been better off, or you guys, if it's a band, you've been better off just making that song for yourself and just playing that in your headphones. It just seems like you were almost too depressed 
to come up with a song musically that that would resonate with a larger audience. It hmm. just seems like sometimes I feel like that's with artists. Like sometimes I'm like, dude, just certain shit. It should just be made for you. <laughs> play that. Play that in your the comfort of your own home and make sure that no one ever ever. I feel, that. Like, I feel, I feel <laughs> that way. Like I feel that way a lot of, about a lot of bullshit songs. <laughs> yeah, that, that's how, like, man, you shouldn't have put yeah, that yeah, out. Yeah, you know? <laughs> it's almost like it was. It was. They, it's almost like they let their emotions uh, prevent them from really even concentrating on creating a great song. It's so personal that it just prevented them from really focusing on all the elements of, of yeah. making a great song. To me, sometimes when I hear certain songs, yeah. I think this song did the opposite of that. Yeah, I thought so too. I thought that they is a very well put together song. They did the mm -hmm. thing, man. So salute. That's not uh, that's not the big four. We're trying to you know switch it up. We got to keep well, we got to keep everybody excited in this and that. And, and we also want to get to obscure shit. Go and ahead. We, yeah, we want to get exposure too. We do. You know we do. <laughs> so to some things that's not necessarily yeah. the the big band. So yeah, man. So this is a this is a good a good little gem there from Candlebox, yeah, man. man. Salute to everybody that requested that. And that's it. That's the end of the video, guys. If you enjoyed that, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And also, guys, we have a Patreon channel. If you're interested, it will allow you to get exclusive access to our content. The link for that will be yes, in the uh, description. I'm George. That's Ryan Las Vegas. We out. We out.